Hello everyone, this is Dr. Ashish Vanmai and welcome back to chapter number 5 that is image transform. This is video number 4 in this series. Now let's discuss the next transform that is hard transform. This transform actually forms the foundation for the wavelet transform which performs the multivision analysis. The hard transform is based on the HAR function hk of x defined on a continuous interval of x from 0 to 1. For k equal to 0, 1, 2, up to so up to capital N minus 1, and capital N is equal to 2 raised to small n. The integer k can be uniquely decomposed as k is equal to 2 raised to p plus q minus 1, where p is in the range of 0 to n minus 1, q is equal to 0 for p equal to 0 and 1 is less than or equal to q less than or equal to raise to p for p not equal to 0. So if we consider an example where capital N is equal to 4 then k can take the values as 0, 1, 2, 3. If k equal to 0 then we will get the values of p and q as 0, 0. For k equal to 1 we will get the value of p and q as 0 and 1. For k equal to 2 the values will be 1, 1. For k equal to 3 the value of p and q will be 1 and 2. The HAR function is defined as h0 of x which is nothing but h00 of x which is equal to 1 upon root n for x over the interval of 0 to 1 and the value of hkx where we decompose k in terms of p and q so it will be hpq of x and that will be given as 1 upon root n 2 raised to p by 2 for q minus 1 divided by 2 raised to p less than or equal to x less than q minus half upon 2 raised to p. The value will be minus 2 raised to p by 2 for the interval q minus half upon 2 raised to p less than or equal to x less than q upon 2 raised to p and the value will be 0 for the remaining interval. So if we find the transformation matrix for a 2 cross 2 case uh, which we represent as HR2 then the, we will get that matrix as 1 upon root 2 1 1 1 minus 1 and the sequence over here will be for the first row is 0 and for the second row the sequence will be 1. If we extend it for the 4 cross 4 uh, transformation matrix which we uh, represent as HR4 then we will get that particular matrix has 1 upon root 4. The first row will be 1, 1, 1, 1 with the sequence is 0. The second row will be 1, 1, minus 1, minus 1 with sequence 1. The third row will be root 2, minus root 2, 0, 0 with sequence 2. And the third row, last row will be 0, 0, root 2, minus root 2 again with the sequence 2. If we extend it for the 8 cross 8 matrix that is HR8, we will get it as 1 upon root 8. The first row will be all 1. The second row will be 1, 1, 1, 1 followed by minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, minus 1. The third row will be root 2, root 2, minus root 2, minus root 2 followed by 4 zeros. The fourth row will have 4 zeros, root 2, root 2 minus root 2 minus root 2. The fifth row will have the value 2 minus 2 followed by 6 zeros. The next row will be 2 zeros 2 minus 2 followed by 4 zeros. Next row will be 4 zeros 2 minus 2 followed by 2 zeros. And the last row of the matrix will be 6 zeros 2 minus 2. Now if you observe the sequence of this matrix, the first row we will have sequence is 0. The second row will have sequence 1 and the remaining rows will have sequence 2. In fact, for any HAR matrix that you generate, you will always have the first row sequence 0. The second row will always have a sequence minus 1 and all the remaining rows will have sequence of 2. That means the maximum sequence that you will get for a HAR transform is always 2. Also, there are a few observations you can make over here. The first two rows spans all the elements whereas the next two rows spans half the elements okay 
so third row spans the first four elements and the first sorry the fourth row spans the last four elements now if you go for the remaining four rows then you will find that these four rows actually span two two elements okay so the fifth row spans the first two elements the sixth row spans the third and the fourth element the seventh row spans the fifth and the sixth element whereas the last row spans the last two elements of that particular row okay and this is what the beauty of a hard transform and that is why actually when we decompose the image using hard transform we get something like a multi resolution representation now to understand this multi resolution decomposition uh, let's see this example so this is the original image shown over here over here we have shown the hadamard transform and the corresponding hard transform on the image so if you observe the hadamard transform you will find that most of the energy is concentrated in the top left corner of the transformed image and as you go the diagonally down you will find that the coefficient values are decreasing whereas in the hard transform we see a slightly different representation now to understand it better uh, let's uh, look at the zoomed version of this hard transform image so i have also increased the contrast uh, just for the visual appearance now if you observe this transform if you observe this fourth quadrant which i have shown over here in the red box you will find that what we see is somewhat kind of a gradient of the original image but of course the size has become half both row wise as well as column wise over here now if we go diagonally upwards from this box you will find that again we see the gradients but again half of the size of this lower quadrants okay so if i go from the uh, rightmost bottom quadrant to the upper one you will see the size has become half same for the next one and this will continue as we go towards the left top quadrant now instead of going diagonally upwards if i go on the left side then you will see that every time i go on the left side i see the gradient but the width of the gradient is becoming half the height is same but width becomes half every time i go towards left side now instead of going left if i go up then you will find that every time i go up of a particular box okay my width will remain same but the height will now become half okay and this you can see for any box okay uh, that you draw around the gradient so overall if you see this uh, transformed image then what we see is the gradient at different resolutions okay so the size of these resolutions uh, is different every time we go towards left the size becomes half every time we go towards top the size again becomes half okay so there is a various size or various resolutions okay of the gradient that are present in the transformed image okay that's why we call this har transform as a basis for multi resolution analysis also if you see the spread of the energy then obviously you will see that the contrast is maximum when you go to the top left corner and as we go down okay the contrast of the gradients is decreasing however if you see the energy is spread all across the transform okay so we can consider that this hard transform has very poor energy compaction property now quickly let's see some important properties of hard transform so if we see the transformation matrix then you will obviously find that the transformation matrix is real so we have hr is same as hr conjugate however uh, it is not symmetric okay but of course it is orthogonal so hr inverse is same as hr transpose also the hard transform uh, is a very fast transform so the 1d hard transform okay actually has a order of n so if you consider with the other transform then the order is least when it comes to the hard transform and as we have seen that uh, the hard transformation matrix is sequency ordered in fact the maximum sequency what we get is 2 and of course the hard transform has poor energy compaction now before we move to the last uh, transform let me pose another challenging problem over here so this challenging problem is again for one extra term work mark and the question is to draw the flow graph uh, or the butterfly diagram which will calculate the fast hard transform for a 8 cross 8 hard transform matrix 
and then of course you have to prove that the order of this first hard transform is 8. The first one who submits the correct answer will get one extra number of marks and you need to submit the answer uh, to my mail id that is ivpashish at gmail.com Now let's see the uh, next transform that is KL transform. Now so far uh, wherever we have discussed various transform we have talked about the energy compaction property of the transform. Some transforms are good, some transform are bad like for example HAR has a very poor energy compaction transform like dct has very good energy compaction which which one which transform can give us the best energy compaction and the answer is kl transform the kl transform was developed by two mathematicians koronen and Lowe. that's why it is abbreviated as kl transform uh, sometimes it is also called as hotelling transform or method of principal component analysis that is pca or single value decomposition that is SVD. For a n cross 1 vector u, the basis vectors of KL transform are given by the orthonormalized eigenvectors of its autocorrelation matrix R. That is, the matrix R into vector phi k is equal to lambda k phi k for 0 less than or equal to k less than or equal to capital N minus 1. The KL transform pair is defined as vector V is equal to matrix phi conjugate transpose into vector U and inverse that is vector U is equal to matrix phi into vector V which can be also written as summation k running over 0 to n minus 1 Vk into vector phi k where phi k is the kth column of the matrix capital phi. The matrix phi will reduce the matrix R to its diagonal form. That is matrix phi conjugate transpose into matrix R into matrix phi will be equal to matrix capital lambda which is nothing but a diagonal matrix with the values lambda k. We can also express the KL transform with uh, covariance matrix. So let's define mu vector mu as expectation of uh, vector u. Then matrix R0 is covariance of vector u, which will be equal to expectation of u minus mu into u minus mu transpose. So if we open up that expression of uh, expectation, we will get it as ex expectation of u u transpose minus mu mu transpose so that is nothing but matrix r minus mu mu transpose so if we know the vector u then the eigen matrix of r0 determines the kl transform to simplify the calculation of uh, kl transform uh, we can use this representation which is also called as svd representation or single value representation so in this case what we do is we first find the matrix u consisting of columns of normalized eigenvectors of a transpose now here the columns are arranged in the order of maximum to minimum eigenvalue similarly we find the matrix v which consists of columns of normalized eigenvectors of a transpose a, again in the maximum to minimum eigenvalues the transformation matrix capital lambda is a diagonal matrix with the singular values of matrix A along its diagonal and that transformation equation is given as capital lambda is equal to U transpose A V. So whatever U that we have found in the first step will be substituted over here and whatever V we have found in the second step will be substituted over here and the capital lambda will be a diagonal matrix and the corresponding inverse transform is obtained as a is equal to u capital lambda v transpose. Now consider this example uh, over here uh, there is a matrix A or image A that we have it is a phi cross phi matrix and if you observe uh, you will find that your A is uh, symmetric so you have A is same as A transpose therefore A, A transpose will be same as A transpose A 
and that is represented over here. Now since A, A transpose is same as A transpose A, both will have the same eigenvalues as well as same eigenvectors. So we can say that the matrix U and matrix V both are going to be same. So if we find the eigenvalues of A transpose, we will have five eigenvalues. So that is represented as a vector lambda over here. And these values are arranged from the maximum value to the minimum value. And if you find the corresponding eigenvectors, then we will again get five different eigenvectors and we normalize them. So the first vector corresponding to the value uh, lambda that is 147.01 will form the first column of matrix U. The second normalized eigenvector corresponding to 1.872 will form the second column of U. Similarly, the third eigenvalue will form the or the third eigenvector of the value 0 0.058 will form the third column of U. Similarly, the last two eigenvalues will have the corresponding eigenvectors. And this is how we will have the matrix U, which is same as V. Okay. And then the transform image can be formed. So if you found, find the transform image, then the transform image will be capital lambda as U transpose AV. And in this case, if you substitute the values, then you will get this answer. And you can clearly see that the final transform image is a, a diagonal uh, in, uh, matrix. That means the non-zero elements will be only along the diagonal and all the remaining elements will be zero. So that is the main crux of the KL transform. Okay. So whatever size of the principal diagonal, only that many number of uh, non-zero elements can be present in the transform image. And that is how it gets the maximum energy compaction. Now here we have taken the inverse transform just for verification. So the inverse is A is equal to U capital lambda V transpose. And if you substitute the values, then we will get the original image back. Now, before we conclude this chapter, let's see the important properties of KL transform. So if you observe carefully, you will find that the KL transform coefficients VK are uncorrelated and they have zero mean. Also, we have seen that the KL transform has the highest energy compaction for the images. The KL transform offers the best uh, rate distribution optimization when it comes to the image compression. However, there is one major drawback that the KL transform has. The KL transform depends on the statistics of the image. So you find the basis from the image itself that is U and V. So anytime when you do a forward transformation and inverse transformation, you will have to go through that entire steps of finding the normalized eigenvectors. Okay, and the size of the image transform will also govern the complexity of your calculations. So that is one major drawback the KL transform suffers. Now this brings us to the end of the chapter image transform. If you have any queries related to this chapter, please write it back to me on my email id that is ivpashish at gmail.com. Also I am separately uh, posting the videos for how to solve the problems on this particular chapter. So also visit uh, those video lectures. Thank you.